How can Verbum Bible software help us in the task of homily preparation? And not just homilies, but really any type of talk from a Eucharistic hour to a retreat or a spiritual conference or a novena talk. All of that can be used inside of Verbum in such a way that all of that functionality of the software becomes extra useful to you in your task of homily building and managing. And so we need to meet those two tools, the, hom the homily builder and the homily manager. So come with me, if you will, to the home page where I'm gonna launch a liturgy layout. You know, you often want to launch the liturgy of the day, but sometimes you're preparing for a homily in the near future, and so you need to come to the calendar and then select perhaps the Sunday just around the corner, or in my case, November 1st, the, the Feast of All Saints. And as you click the calendar, Verbum opens the customized liturgy layout that I've prepared, and I can quickly see that Matthew 5 is the gospel of the day. It's the Beatitudes. And I love this about Verbum is that all of that good work that I've done in the past, highlighting the text in red and green and yellow and making bold face and adding annotations like I've done here in, in Matthew 5, 3 about blessed are the poor in spirit and, and each of the Beatitudes really I have a, a separate note. That is going to be something that I can draw from. Maybe I find inspiration in something I wrote in the past that now helps me in my, uh, my homily prep. But let's face it, my notes are not a homily. I need a fresh piece of paper. I need a new document. And so you're gonna to wanna to come to Tools and choose Homily Builder. That's where you can have a fresh slate and just begin writing a brand new homily. But I wanna show you where we're going. So I'm gonna open the Homily Manager. And this allows me to see the, the database of all of those homilies I've created in the past. And now I can, I can see, for example, that in the top left, I've created some 77 documents. Not all of them are homilies, about 41 it looks like are. But then after that, I have got spiritual exercises. I've got six novena talks. And of course, I can click any one of these blue hyperlinks here. And now it's going to filter down to these six novena talks that I have on Mary's presence, her memory, her beauty, her faith, her power, and her heroism. And that's easily classified and visible here. Of course, if I want to go back and see the full list, I can always hit the X on that filter or hit all to get back to all of the documents inside of my homily manager. Now let's open up one of these documents, shall we? So I'm going to come here to um, a homily here in Easter. And let's make this all one screen just to make things visible. That'll work. Now, as you can see here, I have the text of my homily, but not just the text. I also have other categories too. So I have, for example, the core message with an invitation to say, well, what's the, what do I want my audience to know and what do I want them to feel? And then I can quickly navigate down below to the different parts of the homily because I've created these, these settings. As you see here, joy is in heading two. And then I come down to readings, and as you can see here, I'm in heading one. You can always create headings simply by grabbing the text, coming down and changing normal to heading one, two, or three. And that allows me to navigate quickly to the first reading, for example, where I've marked up the text and made things yellow and bold and um, perhaps I've done the same down in the, in the gospel or in the different prayers of the Roman Missal or um, catechism articles that I found helpful as and complementary to today's liturgy or from other authors who have written on the liturgy that I find inspiration in. So this is surely a very um, easy way to navigate the text by using your table of contents. Come here to the right side of the page and the information pane is also very, very helpful. You're going to want to open this up. Immediately I can see that this is a homily that's 3,296 words. Wow, 27 minutes it says it's going to take to deliver that homily. My homilies might be long, but not that long. Don't worry. This is just because I've added all of those extra sections with the readings and catechism articles, and you might want to leave that stuff out just to get a sense of how long you'll be preaching. That's up to you. But then as, you'll, as you see down below that, I have all kinds of other information. For example, maybe I'm preaching as part of a series of sorts. 
maybe I want to tag it um, with different topics and themes that I touch upon in this homily. So apparently this homily is about the Mass. It's about joy. It's about Jesus' resurrection. These are um, tags that I've added to my homily. As you can see here in the passages section, I've noted only the Gospel. So even though the liturgy had a first reading, a psalm, a second reading, really I'm preaching on the Gospel and the Gospel alone in this passage, in this homily, and I want that to be indicated here. As I scroll down, I can see that I'm the speaker. That's not always the case. You know, maybe I have a really good homily of my priest friend, Father Devin, and I've inserted that into Verbum, but I want to note that he was the author of this particular homily. As I scroll down, I can add other things like the date, venue, and service time. Very important, though, down below is the liturgical day, the liturgical season, and then the liturgical year. These are all categories that are now visible in my homily manager. As you can see in these columns off to the right, they are filled, and now I can, I can filter this list according to all of those Easter homilies, let's say. You know, because maybe you're coming around to the Easter cycle again in the following year, and you want to draw inspiration from those homilies that you did in the previous year. You might compare your, what you wrote for cycle A and cycle B, for example. There's lots of ways you can personalize this information. Now, what happens when I want to create a new homily from the homily builder? I can do that. These are, of course, the index of all the ones I've already created. But how do I make a new one? Well, come to the top of the page, and you'll see here an invitation to make one blank homily and then add it. Well, let's do that. Let's add a blank homily, shall we? And Verbum is going to generate an untitled homily on this list, which I can just scroll down to the end of the list and I can open. And as you can see, there it is, a fresh page ready for me to type away and make my brand new homily. But you would ask, is that really the best way to generate a new homily? Another way to do that is to come to Tools and just come to the Homily Builder and click it. And as you can see, I've untitled homily number five here. That I just did the exact same thing. I created a, a new homily that's blank, ready for me to fill in all of these fields and begin typing away at my new homily, right? And I can, I can do it in that way. But I'm going to close this because I want to show you why it is often very helpful to generate a new homily from the homily manager. But come to the top this time and choose not a blank homily, but look this. There's an option to choose from your templates. Now, I've created a homily template. And as, uh, in fact, I'm going to click this one called homily template. And then I will choose the date. So I could choose... Um, the upcoming date of November 1st, for example, if I wanted to, and then I could hit Add. And now um, Verbum generates a new homily template. And as I open that up, what do I see inside? Not a blank page, but as you can see, it's already filled with all kinds of stuff. An invitation to write the core message. I can type, you know, uh, my homily goes here. <laughs> and I can insert those readings from the, the CDR, if I could just copy and paste them in here. I could do the same from the Roman Missal. I even have a little prompt here about what makes for good preaching, a little reminder at the end of my homily template. You can personalize this however you like. I just want you to know that you can make your own template simply by coming to Tools, creating a homily builder, and at the top, choose a homily template and you can generate a new template in this way. But there's another way as well to begin a new document, a new homily from the homily manager. So you've noticed that I could either do a blank homily or begin with a template of my choice. But a third option is to draw from the lectionary, the Catholic daily readings. Look what I can do here. I can choose, you know, Advent is just around the corner. I'm going to choose to generate a homily for all of those Sundays in Advent of Year B. And I'm asking Verbum to please bulk create a document for each and every one of those Sundays during Advent. And so, sure enough, that's what it does. I've, since I've generated them by week, I'll just look at them here. 
And there they are, first, second, third, fourth Sunday of Advent for year A. I can open up any one of these. And look what's happened this time. Not only has it created the title and told me uh, which series it's in in the time of Advent, look what it's done here in passages. It's already inserted all of the liturgical readings for the first Sunday of Advent. So I didn't have to type in Isaiah 63 and Psalm 84 and um, Mark 13. It did that automatically, drawing that information from the Catholic daily readings. That was very helpful. Now, if I don't want any of these uh, first reading references, I can always click the X and get rid of them. Maybe I preach only on the gospel and, and it's easy to do, to, to delete. But um, that is something I can, of course, manipulate. I can change the, the name of the speaker. I can change um, the date and time, the venue, etc. But that is one helpful way to create um, easy links to all of those passages that are referenced in today's liturgy. Now, you know what would be really nice to be able to do? Bring together my template and the lectionary readings. Now, this new tool is not yet capable of doing both of those things together, but we hope that in the near future it's able to do both. I can choose my template and from my lectionary. But already this is looking pretty good. Let's come back to the homily manager because I want to show you another reason this is useful. Sometimes you need to find something that you wrote, but you don't know where, right? I have some 41 homilies, for example, but in which of them did I write about my first bicycle? Because I want to use that illustration again, let's say, in an upcoming talk or homily, but I just don't remember which of all of these homilies I find it in. Well, this is where you can do a search. So come with me to the search pane and this is where you can do a search everything. If you're not already here, go to basic and drop down to search everything. And let's just type in bicycle and see what happens. Now, this is where Verbum is going to search absolutely everything in my Verbum library. And one of the sections is your documents. And look what it found. Homily from Ordinary Time in Cycle B, the 21st Sunday. And here is a reference to bicycle. So I can click that and quickly open to, to this particular passage that I, where I wrote about my shiny red bicycle. So do you see why this might be helpful for finding things that you've done in the past? Maybe on certain topics or passages. So for example, let's do a passage guide, shall we? Let's look for Luke 24, 13 to 35, the road to Emmaus. I want to see if there's anything in my homilies here. You can see in your content, one of the things that it found was this homily from Easter B, the, the road to Emmaus. As I scroll down the passage guide, I can come down to this sermon section and I have Augustine and others, but look in sermon documents, yet another reference to my homily. So isn't that a helpful tool for finding things and sorting things and classifying things? The point is not to reproduce and to use the tools exactly as I've used them here, but to familiarize yourself with the capacity of the tool so that it's convenient for you when you're writing your next homily. So give it a try. Open a new document, create a new homily, and add some tagging, add some topics and passages, and get yourself familiar with this powerful tool.